encourage you to begin to think. Think about your circumstances, think about your environment, think about how responsible you are being. Think about your contribution to society, to the community. Think about what you can do differently. Think about how you can help others. And then after all of that thought, we want you to pray. As a man or as a woman, that first responsibility is to God to be God conscious. We have to have people to stand up today in our community. Everybody has to be responsible to get the message out. Hearing the word of God would be, and remembering God and being conscious of God would transform your life. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Ali Mali, and I would like to welcome you to the Fame Media Group, Friends and Associates of Imam Muhammad. The objective of Fame is to promote the correct human understanding, to respect human variation, to advance human culture, to promote education, to promote family life, business life, peace, and the rule of civilized government. Today, our focus is education, the cultivation of the human being, the cultivation of the human intellect. Philosophically speaking, becoming educated is an inborn potential that must be cultivated in each individual student. When I look at students before me, I see human beings who are striving to develop their intellectual potential so they can become productive members of society. I always strive to witness and to understand the equality of all students, regardless of race, ancestry or religion. In other words, the diversity of the human family must be respected and given an opportunity to advance and make progress educationally. I would like to introduce my guest, Ms. Shanks, and her granddaughter, Ms. Ella Shanks. I'd like to start with you, Ms. Shanks. Why did you become a teacher? Why did I become a teacher? I've always wanted to be a teacher ever since I was five years old, gathering the neighbor's children and teaching them. It was my passion. So from that day to this day, I've always been teaching children for over 40 years. Oh, that's excellent. That's, that's excellent because <clears throat> it's, it's, it's such a, it's, it's a cultivating proce process and Teachers are born. That's it. Teachers are born. I mean, you can go to college for 99 dozen years, exactly. but if, if you don't have the, the heart to teach and cultivate other human beings, you won't be successful as a teacher. And with that, I'd like to direct my question, Miss Ella. Miss Ella. Yes. As a young lady, what is your perspective of, of education and what's happening with, with education with the young people that you, that you see, that you know? I believe that education today is mainly based off of getting children in and out of school. It's not really geared towards specifics of what you need to get into life. It's more you learn the basics and you learn the education standard, but if you only need to get by with a C, basically, in class. You don't have to get by with striving or trying to get somewhere in life. It's only to get you out of the system into the world. So what you're saying, that, that a C is really not enough, right? No, it's, it's basically ground zero. You can do the bare minimum to skate by and not have to try or give any actual physical endurance to push yourself to get through school. So what do you think, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think young people should do in terms of trying to advance themselves educationally. What do you think, or how do you think young people should change their attitude? I think young people should really try to set goals for themselves because when you set goals, it's not only something to look forward to in the, as an end result, but it's also something to get you to push yourself harder and to always think smarter. And with all these different tools we have that are <coughs> accessible today, like online, apps and things that you can do to further yourself in life, I think there's really no excuse to say that you don't have the means to do so if you have a phone or if you have a computer or access to a library. Okay, so, so what you're saying basically is that there's a lot of potential out there, but you have to take advantage of it, right? Yes. You can't waste your time. Yes. 
Yes. I mean, you can't just be plugged up to rap music all day and every day, right? Yes. <laughs> That's very good. So, Ms. Shanks, um, based on your experience, your education, your background, do you see a difference between education mm-hmm. in the past, mm-hmm. the, the present, <clears throat> and the future? Maybe I should say, what is the contrast and what is the difference? Oh, there is a big difference between 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. There was a big difference because when we had prayer in school, the schools thrive, the students thrive, because there was a lot of love among children and the teachers. But when they took prayer out of school, everything began to go downhill. What I mean by that is children began to stop coming to school on time, they have lost respect yeah. for teachers and authority. Uh, they use profanity, like it's just another language, a uh, regular language, you know? Yes, yes, I yes, mean, there yes. is no respect at all. And today what I see is that children, I've never heard of it, taking breaks every 10 or 15 minutes in school. Yes, 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 I understand uh, that. Yeah, uh, we never that. had that before. Um, students stayed in the classroom, attentive for the time. And when they had their recess, that was the time for them to have their break. It was the time for them to get the water, use the bathroom, or any other necessary things that they needed. But today, I'm finding that every, and I clock them every 10 minutes, they need a break. A break from what? They haven't done anything. Yeah. So and that's a serious problem that we have today. We knew that we talked about it 30 years ago, how the drugs affected the minds of our children. Yes, that's, yeah, that's true. I agree. Uh, <clears throat> that made a big impact. And so we are seeing the results today. We have more special children in school than we've had before. So that's a big difference. Yeah, I, you know, I agree with that because because cr- when the crack, yes, the cr- I, I call it the crack monster. Yes. The, when the crack monster was released into our community, mm-hmm. what it did is broke the whole structure of the family life down. Because mm-hmm. I can remember on many occasions I had what you call crack babies in my class, mm-hmm. and they would tear the class up. Yes. Because because they were they were so so I would say stimulated, and they couldn't focus, oh, and as a result they, they couldn't really cultivate themselves to be successful with the coming years of education. So that, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. <clears throat> um, you, you you may be a little young to experience that, but do you know anything about the the, the, the drug situation among young young people today? Do you have friends who who maybe been victims of, of a s- drug use, and do you know people, young people, who, who are affected? So, uh, what do you what do you what do you think about that? I think it's very evident that uh, drugs are in the community because not only are their parents around it, but now their cousins are around it, and with the legalization of marijuana, a lot mm-hmm. of kids can just either buy stuff online or they can just steal something from their parents and it becomes known as ADHD or different Mm -hmm. mental side effects that people are saying that they have but it's really due to another underlying problem that they try to cover up with something else Mm -hmm. and it ends up being a multi-layer problem that continues to grow deeper and deeper into their education (coughs) and you find kids that can't read or can't multiply can't add Mm -hmm. and they say that it's because they have a learning disability when really it's related to something completely different that's yeah 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 that's that's yeah that's amazing because mm-hmm. often you hear the idea which in my mind is is, is is a lie that's saying well it's okay to smoke a little marijuana but but <clears throat> but the, the truth of it is that the marijuana has a very very negative effect upon the internal life of the individual exactly the, in, the exactly. intellect, the genetic structure, and so what happens is that that over a period of time, a whole generation is wasted because of drugs, and that's that's unfortunate. 
And this is something that we have to really take serious because if we don't take it serious, we will not evolve, and I say evolve into the type of individuals, people that we should as human beings in general, as, as, as Americans in general, but as African Americans in particular. In particular. In particular. Because you'll find, you'll find this problem is running rapid among our children more than any, anybody else's. And that's my perspective. My, that's my perspective, and I, and I see it every day. And it's, it's, it's not good. Ms. Shanks, you... And in our neighborhoods. Yes, okay. It, it's, okay. it's all over, and it's not good. But we have to have a strong mind to not to take it, but some people are not strong enough or they don't know the effects of the marijuana. Yeah, okay. And they think it's okay because now they have legalized it. Why? And where is it? What neighborhoods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you find it? It's, it's always in the black communities. But we have to be strong enough. We are a strong black people. We have to be strong enough to not to take it, to go there. But how many black parents do we have today that yes. can do that? Yeah, and, and, and it's unfortunate because I, I, I can recall coming into contact with parents and they come to school to pick their children up and they smell like, like the weed house. Exactly. And it's, un, it's unfortunate, I mean, it's an unfortunate thing. And I'm not saying that to be funny, but, but, but it, the, the cultivation of the, the intellect of the human being and, and, and the, okay, the more substance you put in yourself in terms of drugs, what you're doing, you're cutting your potential. You're, you're cutting your potential. So it's important to understand that you have to stay away from it. And one thing that you said earlier, you said God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you take God out of education, that's it. When you take God out of social life, when you, when, you, when you take God out of culture, who else is in the culture? You got the devil. Or the influences of the devil. I say the influences of the, of the bad things. So, so it's important for us to understand that, that the cultivation of, of ourselves as human beings, and when I say human, I think that's a very strong concept because I think we have to learn how to identify ourselves in our very essence, in our essence as human beings, and, and, and dealing with our essence, we're dealing with great potential to advance ourselves. And we see that in our history. We see that in our past history. We see that in our history and being in this country and becoming a part of the mainstreams of this country. Obama, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Dr. King, and many others. Local people, Dr. 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 Uh, Carlton Goodley. Did you, did you, were you uh, aware of Dr. Goodley when he was in San Francisco before he passed away? And Dr. Goodlett was one of my mentors. Oh. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I worked for him when I was in college. And, and Dr. Goodlett, he had a PhD in psychology, and he had an MD degree, and he owned the Sun Report of newspapers, and he was in contact with people throughout the world. As a matter of fact, I remember going to a, uh, I remember going to a, uh, a reception that he sponsored for the Russian embassy in San Francisco. So, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that we have to attempt to cultivate, that, cultivate ourselves to achieve what we have to achieve. And uh, we are getting close to the break time. So with that, I would like to say, I would like to say thank you, Ms. Shanks and, your, and Ms. Ella for being a part of this section of the program. We're gonna take a break. We'll be coming back in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Just tuning in, I'd like to welcome you to Fame Media Group, friends and associates of Imam Muhammad. And today we are discussing the idea of education. And I have uh, before me Mr. Brown and Ms. Shanks, who, who are the guests. But I'd like to start this second uh, part of the program with Mr. Mr. Brown, Mr. Herman Brown. He's a graduate of McClymouth High School. And he's, he's, a, he's a TOC veteran. If, is, that, is that what you call it? T -O -C. Oh, TOC? TOC. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what the TOC, the, the TOC is the Tournament of Champions. The, the tournament that McClymouth used to win every year. And this went on for generations. So um, in addition to that, Mr. Her, Mr. Herman Brown, he went to St. Mary's College. 
He played with St. Mary's with Maurice Hopper on, on a very good team. And to my understanding, he was drafted by the Boston Celtics. But you know something? I'm glad Mr. Brown went into education. <laughs> I'm glad he did. So uh, as a teacher, Mr. Brown, of mathematics, how would you deal with mathematics phys phys in a as a philosophical science and as a practical science? Why is math so important? That's uh, quite an excellent question. And I have a story behind that in being a teacher for 41 years, I have learned how to be a storyteller. And, uh, one day I was in the bank and I was behind this gentleman in line who was talking to somebody else. And it was a young person complaining about, you know, why do you have to study math when you go to a job and uh, you don't even have to use math on the job, they, they give you a math test. And I thought about that and pondered that. And the gentleman who responded, he said, well, one thing about mathematics, it's a logical science. It trains your mind to think logically because there is always something that precedes, something that follows it. And math is the language of the nature of that because that is how our universe is put together. And that's why we call it a universal language because it can predict and it can dictate. Not that the math is doing it. The math is just something that is a language that we use to interpret and communicate back and forth with the things that our minds enhance and discover. It's God's language. We're just learning as human beings how to take that and then we lay it back. And it's a science unto itself with its own language. Mathematics is also uh, an internalized uh, culture unto itself. And all cultures have behaviors. And as a math teacher, you know, I share that with my students. I said that if you can learn how to uh, read and write this language, then you'll be able to even think in it better. And once your mind starts thinking as a mathematician, which will someday eventually blossom into you being a scientist, that you will become a creator yourself. And you will make discoveries, and then you can share that with the public at large and the communities at large. It's a language. A language, a language. That's, that's, that's very important to understand because, because language is what makes the mind. You want to create the mind, you want to cultivate the mind, you have to cult, cult, you cultivate the mind with language. And so it's important. So you, if you have a bad language, you're mm -hmm. going to have a bad mind. Mm -hmm. If you have a good language, you're going to have a good mind. So, so I would like to ask you, how can a student master the language of mathematics? Well, what was mentioned earlier, as uh, Ms. Shanks did, about taking God out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, that Math, that's God's language. Mm -hmm. Einstein himself, with his incredible mind, he even made that statement, not necessarily in those words. And what I do on a daily basis with, with my students is encourage them all the time is to relax. Let the demon come out of you because oh, I have the, I have the uh, mm -hmm. same uh, clientele of students that you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will pause them and say, if you would just meditate and allow your spirit to cultivate, mm -hmm. then what you're gonna do, you're gonna enhance what's in front of you. And in my classroom uh, audience out there, I have it as a theme of, uh, of uh, a lot of uh, posters that go back to uh, ancient Kemet. And if you're not aware of Kemet, anybody out there, that's uh, the, the civilization from the Nile Valley, that's a black civilization that uh, is called Egypt now. But Egypt, that's a, uh, a Greek name that was given to that land. But the people there, they call themselves Kemites. And there's a big uh, uh, debate on that, on what does Kemet mean. And uh, so-called Eurocentric-minded white archeologists would say that that means uh, uh, the, the, the land of the black soil. But uh, there are some also uh, African-American and African Mm -hmm. uh, historians who understand the hieroglyphics and said that it's not the land of the black soil, it is the black land mm -hmm. because there are uh, certain aspects of the hieroglyphic that dictates a village, not the ground. 
So when I talk to my students about that, I make reference to those uh, to those uh, images that are on the wall to try to give them some uh, 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 incentive that you come from a strong culture of mathematics and to, to buy in and tune into that and that the hieroglyphics themselves, or those are messages uh, that are mathematically bound. Uh, and another thing, just to share with the audience, because I am talking about math, and this is talking about black history, is that uh, in the early 20s, when the European archaeologists discovered the mathematics of the so-called ancient Egyptians, who were the Kimites, uh, that they said they had a cumbersome <coughs> math language and that it wasn't where they were using Arabic numerals, but they had a writing system and a numerical system that uh, wasn't productive to uh, doing calculations. But in the advent uh, of computers, and it's coming to awareness now that the computers all function on, as they were designed, on binary operations. And the ancient Egyptians there Chemites, their mathematics was on just how computers function. So this is something they were advanced way ahead of time before we started talking about uh, adding and subtracting and multiplying. Of course, that was there because they didn't have a time statement. Uh, what they had was a binary system on doubling, and that's what computers do. So that language from that culture itself just was far ahead of anybody that could perceive it. But just on being a math teacher, uh, you know, I've always uh, 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 tell students that this is the, the subject that is power. And this is the type of mindset that you have where you can make predictions just by observations and you can record it and you can document it. And that power is so great that there are powers that exist that will do everything they can to keep you from accessing that power like we talked about about the drugs coming into the community. Mm -hmm. Now, my, myself, I'm a person of, uh, uh, I would say, of conspiracies that are really not conspiracies, they're just observation. And I'm just gonna take a time out around that and diverge from that because the person that I am, the teacher that I am, I owe it all to Mr. Muhammad Ali here. This was my mentor when I was 13 years old as a young boy growing up in the so-called ghetto in West Oakland. And he appeared on the scene in my life when I was 13 years old, and he started educating me and some other friends of mine about who we were and where we were in 1965. Malcolm X was still living, but he was like the only one that was throwing the message out there of saying, you know, you have to seize and take hold of the time and not to be saying, uh, we shall overcome and, and fight for integration at a, at, a, at a coffee shop. You know, I never forget Malcolm saying, you know, if you have your mind together, and you're out there, you won't be singing, you'll be out there swinging, yeah. you know, and you can be <laughs> going for, for what's yours and, and take it for your right. But Mr. Ali educated me. And we're talking about education. And education is when, uh, and we can uh, define it in many ways, but for me personally, it's an a, it's a, a, a uplifting, uh, an ascension of uh, consciousness on, on where you are because you have become enlightened to see beyond what's in front of you. And this is where the God situation comes in. Because when that light comes into you, then you lift mm -hmm. and then you see beyond that and then you continue to grow. And that education in itself will cause you to become more of a person that understands and knows that you are of a God, that a God made you there as a creator. Yes, and then yes. you can identify with that in honor and respect yes. of the creator, you will tend to strive and be like the creator and not to go into the sin that we know that's all around us. Because believe me, being in a classroom for 41 years, I have witnessed a, 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 a degeneration of us mm -hmm. as a culture, how we have just been destroyed to the yes. point where our young people, our young children, they are disrespectful, they rude, they don't come into a classroom like you know to learn, they come in a classroom to destroy yes. the classroom. Yes. And yes. again, yes. I say, you know, I owe this to uh, Mr. Ali, that in, in my pursuit of education, I made it very clear to myself because I had a, a, an opportunity to become a professional basketball player once upon a time in my life. But I made a stand against St. Mary's College on racial uh, uh, events that were taking place. And we had a boycott, St. Mary's did, against the uh, University of Santa Clara. I think this was 1971. And uh, the black players, we all stopped the game and made it public aware to uh, the Bay Area what was going on. And of course there had to be a speech that had to be dictated to the audience 
I was the person that delivered that speech. I was the person that wrote the speech, but I was the deliverer. I was the messenger of the speech. The person who wrote the speech, I say this as if he's watching or not, was afraid to speak his mind, which he was so eloquently uh, profound with it, but he didn't have any heart to do the speech or there was a fear in him for a backlash. Mm -hmm. But me being raised where I came from in West Oakland and was taught by this man about having courage and to stand up and speak for yourself, I said, I'll read that speech. And because of that, the NBA said, oh no, you're a troublemaker, you're not gonna play professional basketball. Yeah. So I was blackballed out of the NBA, but that did not stop me with my educational pursuits. I said, well, that's all right, because I'm gonna graduate, I'm gonna get my degree. And when I did graduate from St. Mary's, I was awarded the uh, President Scholar Athlete Award that I had the highest grade point average of all the athletes at the school. But as soon as I did receive my degree, I uh, continued to pursue knowledge. St. Mary's forgave me for that as a school. They uh, acknowledged that I stood up for our rights mm -hmm. and they awarded me a whole free year of education mm. and paid, paid that back to me. They, they acknowledged that. And I was able to go and get my teacher's credential in the educational program. They gave me free tuition, free uh, uh, room and board at the uh, campus. And I immediately left St. Mary's with my educational degree and said, I'm going back home. I'm going back to West Oakland. I'm going to be a teacher mm -hmm. because I need to send the message back to the young people what this man gave the message to me. And this is what we talk about education, taking care of ourselves. Because if it wasn't for his message, to lift me up, there's so many young people in the world right now that I have affected in their lives yes. that uh, they never would have received it. And I know we have about one minute, but I brought something, I'm gonna share this with everybody real, real, real fast about this power of education. I have a postcard from a former student of mine, and it reads like this, audience. Mr. Brown, you may not remember me, but I was your Westlake Middle School math class. I hated math because I thought I would never understand it. But you taught me that I would learn and be good at anything. You made me feel confident and never, I never forgot that. I fell in love with math and the sciences. I am now a nurse practitioner in Oakland and I always thank you when I pass by the school. But I want to share it because this is a message that I was able to send mm -hmm. to, to this student that this man gave to me and this is what we have to do to carry it on. Okay, I'm a storyteller, so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, we're gonna take a break, Mr. Brown. Brother, I have to say praise be to God. Yes, yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so, I'm so honored to be in your presence, you know. So we will take a break and come back to the next section in a couple. Thank you again for tuning in uh, into our program. But I would like to continue this discussion on education. But I want to focus on the education of the young people, and I want Miss Ella to really give us a perspective as a young lady, how would you and what would you do to make education right? I think education, especially for people of color and more diverse schools, because now you see more um, Latina and uh, Hispanic children in school, it, it really changed the diversity of school, and now it's, there's, are teachers that are basically placed in the school system to teach kids the standard and to get them out of school instead of really focusing on how to make sure that they understand how to live in life instead of just understanding what's in the book you need to also understand what's in life you can't just apply one thing to one specific situation and expect a child to understand if they have different issues or if they're at home and they're not brought up in a certain background that your class probably was brought up in you see that the way that they respond to certain situations will be much different. Instead of responding with words, they respond with their fists. Or instead of responding with knowledge, they respond with whatever they think. And now that you have all these influencers, which are basically people that are designed to influence people, they follow these influencers that are put online in order to change the minds of the people that are actually going to school. So you could be learning something in school and then you go look at what an influencer says and it contradicts it and you're suddenly you're following this person instead of your school. So I want to ask you a question then. You say influencers. So what kind of influencers are you talking about? Well, with social media in particular, they have people that are at a higher ranking or have more following as they call it. Okay. And they have they get a lot of foot traffic by people that look at them online 
and they start getting paid to talk about certain things in order to get people to follow a specific event or a specific thought pattern. Okay. And that starts changing the mindset of people when this is constantly around you and it's constantly being said. The amount of times people use their phone in a day, the amount of times people are on social media, that's all you see, that's all you're programmed to know. And if you are living in a broken home or you're living with parents that really just don't know how to put up with you or they just stop caring because you're a hopeless effort to them because they don't know how to deal with that, then mm. they you don't have any control. You just do whatever you please. And when you do whatever you please, you have no structure. The structure that you put onto yourself is someone else's thought pattern. Okay. So so, so what you're saying is is that, that the influence is, is not about cultivating, I'm going to use this word, the intellect of, of the, the young people. The influence is, is basically d designed to make them act like animals or people that don't think or, or, or how would you how would you classify that I would classify it almost as a ruler in a sense okay a lot of young people they're looking for something in particular to either fill a void or to keep themselves occupied and when it's not with something that's furthering themselves or growing their knowledge it's <coughs> something that entertains them and somebody that entertains them could be any number of things. And these influencers, they really appeal to children in particular, like taking photos and posting stuff online, going out with, to parties and stuff. That's things that a lot of young people are interested in. Okay. So when you see someone that's doing that, giving you these influences, you're not thinking for yourself anymore. Okay. You're, okay. They're controlling them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I want you to uh, tell me what do you think about, think about this. I, I was at a school a couple of weeks ago is at high school, I was working there. And we talked about influence, and I saw how the students dress, basically, okay? And I saw a young lady, she had on jeans, mm -hmm. with a big hole, big hole in the jeans. And uh, that's the style. And, and, and I was amazed because the way she looked, she was showing all of her legs. And I, I mean, I, I, I saw this and I, I said, wow, this is really, this is really not good. So as, as, as a young lady, how do you feel about something like that? I think that there should be a more distinct line between fashion and appropriateness. There's okay. a certain level and a standard of appropriateness that you should have when you're in a public place, especially in a place where you are to learn, not necessarily to express how you feel, which I think is the new stigmatism on school. You should be able to express how you feel and how you want to think, but that's not what school was invented for. It yeah, was not yeah. invented for you to go and just put up posters of what you think you want to do or it, what you feel. It's for you to further your expansion and growth of your mind not necessarily to walk around in basically shorts and tank top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be respectful of the place that you're going to and you should have a certain level of expectation for yourself, not regardless of what you see of other people, mm -hmm. let alone just walking into a classroom and sitting down with barely anything on, you're not paying attention. Yeah. And I think teachers, some teachers don't care anymore because a lot of teachers, they're fed up with it and they don't have anything to say with it because the school changes their handbook because even the parents are on board with the way their kids dress. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, okay, on the, on the gender level, gender, gender level, how are boys being educated? I think a lot of young men, especially African American men in particular, they're taught up mostly by teachers that are not like them. When you are not taught by African American teachers that teach you how to be a strong black man, you're taught by another race or another man but is, does not have the core values of a man. It does not teach you how to stand up and have real courage or real strength. It teach you how to basically go through life, go through the motions, but not through the thought patterns and not stand up for what you believe in or what you should believe in. <coughs> Okay. Exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yes. So, 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 are you saying that there's a, and I hope you understand my question and seem like you will understand it, are you saying there is a cultural reality and there's a reality of distinction when it comes to educating 
young African-American boys, when I say distinction, if we don't accept our distinction and see ourselves in a distinct way as human beings based on our experience, we won't be able to go ahead. So what you're saying is that on a cultural level, the African-American boys are not being properly educated by educators because the educators don't know or the educators don't care or what, what am, am I making sense? Yes. I think that it, it goes both ways because mm -hmm. at my school, it's a private school, so a lot of the teachers there, they have good intentions, but I don't think they fully understand or are equipped to deal with diversity among African Americans. It's diversity with other cultures or just one particular race. Okay. And okay. public school is basically, you might see African American teacher and you might have them for one or two classes, but all the other teachers, they're not African Americans mm -hmm. or they're not equipped to deal with African Americans because they're also not taught how to deal with diversity among African Americans and the distinction between any other race. Okay, you know, I, I, I agree with that because, because diversity is good. Okay, let, let, me, let me make a point here. On a universal level, it's good. It's good to be diverse. But at the same time, you can buy into the idea of diversity and not have a sense of yourself and get lost. Where you, you come into diversity and the diverse people have a sense of themselves, culturally and otherwise. So if you go into diversity and not have a sense of yourself, you're going to get led in the wrong direction. Or you might not be able to come into the right understanding about yourself as a human being and as African Americans. Um, and, and I see that I'm not against diversity, but I'm for diversity with a sense of knowledge of yourself. So what do you think about that? I think that that's, that's what, where I was going with uh, the, basically the different distinctions of okay. diversity in classrooms because a lot of African American students, they know about Rosa B. Parks and certain political figures like Martin Luther King Jr., but do they know Ida B. Wells? Do they know Sojourner Truth? You ask them these other names that come up in history and they can't tell you anything because they were not taught that. Okay. Because the teachers don't know that. Okay, okay, okay. So since the teachers don't know it, the teachers can't really provide the guidance that's necessary for them to, to, to advance. See, education is about the cultivation and the advancement of what? The intellect, the, the, the human mind. And if, if we don't look at it from that perspective, if you not, as a teacher, and I say this, I, I say this emphatically, as a teacher, if you're not trying to cultivate the mind of the child, you are not doing what you're supposed to do as a teacher. And so how do you do that? You have to have a basic essence of what it is to be a human being. And you have to understand human beings are born to have knowledge. Okay? And so, and so, and where do we get knowledge from? We get knowledge from God's creation. Knowledge comes from God's creation. And when you understand that, and you understand in your soul, in your, 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 your uh, genetic makeup, okay, your genetic makeup, as I was saying, as you were created, you were created to know. And if you're not trying to know right now, you're being misguided. And sometimes, you know, we have educators who are educated on one level, but don't understand the essence of what it means to be a human being. And, and, and I'm saying you have to be able to bring the two together. And so, and so education is important, like you're saying. So, and then I'm going to ask you another question. What's happening with the young ladies in terms of education? I think a lot of young ladies in class think that it's more of a social gossip, gossip session. Mm -hmm. Now it's more a time to talk and to catch up on what you did during the weekend and what you saw on social media and whose house you went to and how you look rather than still what's going on in the classroom. I think basically both genders, especially for females, it's more a distraction to get away from home and to get away okay. from everything else, but it's still not a place of learning. Somehow it still gets transformed into something that the student wants it to be rather than what the guidelines of the school is actually made to be. So what's the purpose of the classroom? 
to help grow the expansion of the human mind in particular to help you be prepared for life to help you go out and to change the world and not to be a follower of these influencers and people that are put in place to basically change your mindset instead you should be helping to change the world as in you should be giving guidance or helping to guide yourself onto a path of expansion not declining and putting yourself in a mental capacity where you're isolating your brain from being able to grow excuse me how old are you 14 years old. Audience, do you hear this young lady? 14? Praise be to Allah. <laughs> Praise God. Because this is the kind of mind that we should be trying to cultivate in our young people. This is what we should be trying to do. Because if you have no knowledge, if you have no mind, you have no life. Exactly. What gives you life? Knowledge. It's knowledge that gives you. Food is a biological life, but the biggest life and the great life mm. is the cultivation of the human soul mm -hmm. and the cultivation of the human intellect. My, my, my. And you are walking that path. Praise yeah. be to Allah. Yeah. Praise God. This young lady, I'm, I'm honored. To, I'm honored to be in your presence. I'm, yes, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm honored to have known your grandmother. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. And I wish you were one of my students. Man, praise be to God. So uh, I'd like to end this se session. Thank you very much. And it's time for us to take our next break. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Greetings again of Asalaamu As Alaikum. We are back again, the last portion of our program. And I would like to tell a story uh, about something in reference to uh, Miss Ella Shanks, uh, our young guest. I remember once, uh, 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 my mother, Doretha Wayne, sh she raised five boys. She had five boys in a row. And at one point in time, she had five boys in college all at the same time. And I'm, I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest. So one day, one day, Reverend Geis at, at, at uh, Bethel Baptist Church mm -hmm. asked Miss Sister Wayne to come to church. And so, and bring her boys. So we all went to church together, all five of my brothers. And he called us forward, called my mother, and he called my brothers, and we stood up in front of the church. And he looked at my mother, he looked at, he looked at us, he looked at the congregation, and he said, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. <laughs> That's what he said. And I'm saying this in the context of the hand, in the broadest sense, is the family life. The hand is the family, the mother and the father. So, so you parents have witnessed a young lady tonight, and I'm saying this, she is from a, 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 a family situation that made her like this. You have to take the responsibility of cultivating your children. Turn the TV off, take that cell phone from them, prevent them from looking at all the silly stuff and attempt to cultivate their minds yes. and their character. That's important. That, that's yes. important. And uh, I, I'm, really, I'm really amazed with that. Yes. So the family, the family, the family, the family is, 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 is extremely important. And with that, I would like to turn the attention of the program to Brother Bashir Salam, yes. who's who asked me to come on board, and, and really, I'm, I'm very happy that he did because we are working together to try to make things better. And you young people out there, y'all want to talk? Come talk to us. We got something to say. We got something we can do together. We will listen to you because we understand what you're going through. So you should come to us and, and let us talk as a group of people, as human beings to make life better for everybody. Brother Bashir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm very honored to be uh, here on the show with uh, Brother Muhammad tonight. And, uh, you know, when we started uh, the idea of having uh, the show, uh, it was based upon what our great leader, Imam W. Dean Muhammad, who I was a friend of the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
And one of the things that he said was to go back. I was, I was a, a leader in the community of Richmond. And uh, when he became the leader, he told us to go back to our respective mosques and teach the people to become accountable and responsible for their own lives. And, you know, me and my friend, Brother Gerald, and uh, the other gentlemen that work with us with Fame Media, which means Friends and Associates of uh, Imam Muhammad, one of the things that we, when we started, we said that we wanted to tell the men and the women, the fathers and mothers, to become accountable and responsible for their own lives. You know, uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad, he said that, uh, that uh, you know, he was a man that understood scripture. And he said, you know, there would be a famine in the, in the world, mm -hmm. and the Bible speaks of it. It wouldn't be a famine of food, but it would be a famine of hearing the word of God. And one of the things that he said was to go back, and God tell us in our book, the Quran, that uh, God says that we have to take responsibility for our life. You know, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to take responsibility to save ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And and, and and our family and our community, and the reason why we're doing this show is to let the men and the women and, and the viewers to take responsibility for your life. Save yourself. God says, save yourself first and your family from the fire. <laughs> and it's not talking about no physical fire burning up everything. It's talking about the fire of passions. That's the higher meaning in scripture. The fire is talking about the passions. And this is what we see the influences of the passion of destroying the people. Yeah, you know something? We live in a we live in a a culture of fire. What you're talking about. Yes. Yes. It's, it's burning the people up. Yes. Look at look at uh uh, uh Mr. Cosby. Yeah, yeah. Look at R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah. You know, couldn't control the passions. Look at these CEOs who are watching mm -hmm. child pornography. Yeah, yeah. They can't control the passions. Yeah. And we have we have we have uh, uh, people that's over these corporations. Yes, yes. Greed, that's a passion. We see the we see Bernie Madoff made off with all that money. He had all this money, but he couldn't get enough money. The passion. Yes, yes. That's the fire that's burning up the world today. People not being able to control mm -hmm. their passions. So we are educating people. A, a higher education. And one of the things that uh, Muhammad the prophet said, seek education from the cradle to the grave. Even if you have to go so far as China. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and he said, uh, knowledge is the lost property of the believer. Yeah. This is Muhammad the prophet. Yeah. Who received the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah, he also yeah. taught us uh, you know, to protect the sacred houses of worship. This is why we invite our Christian brothers and our, our Christian sisters mm -hmm. to come because we're not trying to dominate them and say that, that uh, you know, we want you to be a Muslim. No, stay where you at, mm -hmm. work where you at. Yeah. Because God said that we all shall have our reward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be we Christian, Jew, Sabian, yes. all who believe in God is going to have their reward. And you know something, brother? I, I'm, I'm going to say this. You talk about Christian. Man, my mother was a Christian. Yes. Don't read the way. And, 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 and she, was one of, she was the one of the best Christians that I, that, I, that I knew as my mother. And she was a decent woman. Mm -hmm. And my mother was too, brother. And we, we, we come from that. We come from that. Strong. I grew up in North Richmond. Yes. And we didn't have a lot of money, but we had strong, strong, strong. family, yeah. strong community life. Yes. You know, the whole neighborhood <laughs> raised us, you know? Exactly. Uh, and Mr. Charlie Reed at, 
They named they named the park after uh, Mr. Reed in North Richmond. Yeah. Charlie yeah. Reed. Yeah. You know Reed's Park. So we have to get back to we have to get back to uh, taking responsibility for ourselves, for our family, for our community. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm calling on all God-loving people to come and join us in this work. Mm -hmm. Let's not continue to be divided in our churches. Yeah. In our churches, in, 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 in our mosques, you know, let's join together and work together to save ourselves and our families from that fire of passion. Yes, yes, yes. Because <laughs> yes. that's what's burning yeah. up the world not being able to control our passions. Mm -hmm. So we want to uh, <clears throat> to thank our guest who was with us tonight. Yes, yes. And yes. I'm very inspired mm -hmm. yes. with the guest that was on our show tonight. And we want to reach out to the community. If you have something to say that will help us in our effort, call our uh, number. Yes. Call Fame Media. Uh, Brother Muhammad, uh, and we also need help. We need help. We need financial help. Yes. Donate to uh, Fame Media so we can continue to 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 have this program being aired at our TV. And you know, when you help us, when you help us, you are helping yourself because you are helping the human cause. Mm -hmm. We're about the human cause, cultivating the human being, human life, human society that involves every aspect of human life. So when you help us, you're helping yourself. And I say this also, you need to come down to 7801 and see this beautiful television station, our TV. Yes. I mean, this, this is a beautiful, beautiful television station that we have that's owned by Mr. Leonard Stevens, uh, Channel 78. You need to come down and visit uh, this station. I know uh, when I was, when I got, uh, came down and seen what this man had put together for our community, for our community, not only for us, but for all people, but mm -hmm. come down and see what's, what's down here at 7801 Edgewater, yeah. our TV. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Muhammad? Well, well, I, I, I I would like to thank you for being a part of our program. And uh, as I indicated earlier, we are about bringing progress to human life. And we are about trying to have people come see and understand one another. And I, I want to make this point. When you see Christians and Muslims at odds, that's unnatural. That's not even natural. Because we all come from the same source and we all share the same fithra, the human pattern that God created. So we have to grow as human beings and come together and to make progress for everybody. And God said this in the Quran. He said if he wanted all of us to be of one religion, he could have made that could have been easy for God to do. Yes. You know, yeah. but God, uh, you know, we all is going to have to go and stand in the judgment That's for right. our creator. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you live your faith? How did you live your Christian faith? How did you live your Jewish faith? How did you live your Muslim faith? That's you right. know what That's I mean? Right. I love to have a, a real Christian brother yeah. and sister living next door to me. Yeah. Because I know he's not going to try to mess with my wife or try to molest my daughter, yeah, yeah. not if he's living this Christian religion, yes. and the same as, as uh, it is for Muslims, you know? Okay. So we are one people. Okay. okay, thank you very much for for being a part of this program, and may God have mercy and bless you. Assalamu alaikum.
This morning and started praying, huh? I had to get up real early before the rising sun. I was feeling real sleepy, but I knew where to meet me, huh? Cause I was praying all night for the light to soon come. It was swiftly, it hit me like a Nayalini drum. And it sounded like music coming from canyons. Forms appeared and I could hear people jamming. It was the comforting prophet and his companions. I never thought Salalah Walehi Wasalam would materialize in my household and be my imam. Then a shining light appeared with the sound of a great bomb. It was the angel Jibril, Alehi Wasalam. His voice was so calm. He said, come with me, I won't make you see. There is a work only you can complete. Come and take a ride on the bright side. Travel seven heavens to the most high. Just then the whole crew transported to a planet of lost souls, defiled and distorted. He said...